So the first thing we're going to do is make a little cheese ball. Now I know you're used to cheese balls from the grocery store, but they're nothing like what we're going to make today. Because we're going to start with something that you make, which is fresh ricotta. Yes, ricotta, you know, Marianne, means recooked. Exactly. And the traditional way of making ricotta is making it from the whey. Mm -hmm. The liquid part of milk. Milk, fat, protein, and water. The watery part we call whey. But in today, the demand for ricotta is so great, it's made from whole milk. Okay, yes. And uh, I brought some ricotta. Now we make it our traditional way. It's with fresh whole milk and a little bit of uh, salt and a little bit of vinegar to curdle the, the milk. Right. However, I tasted your delicious ricotta <laughs> that you made. You used <laughs> lemon juice, which yep. is fine. All you need is a, a, right. an acid to, uh, to coagulate, to coagulate the milk. it. Right. You're right. So this is fresh ricotta. It's so easy to make. We've done this in one of our programs. You can watch it online. You'll see it in subsequent shows. But basically, we have some fresh ricotta, and you'll never eat ricotta from a grocery store once you make your own. So to the ricotta, we want to add some gorgonzola. Now, this yes. is gorgonzola dolce? That's right. Gorgonzola okay. dolce. It comes from the region of... Lombardia and a little bit of Piemonte. Now, Gorgonzola Dolce, this one is what we call molto cremoso. You see how Very creamy it creamy. is? Very creamy. And it should always be purchased so that it is all white all the way to around the rind mm -hmm. with just enough blue veins in it. Right. That's natural penicillin uh, added to the milk. Mm -hmm. And through oxidation, the mold starts to develop. Gorgonzola Dolce is sweet, it's yes. very delicate. And this will blend really well with the ricotta yes. as well. Uh, no, we have a gorgonzola picante uh, as well. Uh, uh, yeah, forte. Yeah, yeah so picante, those. which is a little bit sharper and drier, great crumbled on salad. Mm -hmm. but this one here is what you would want to use. For, for your, this, for because this is a, it's a, right. a very creamy cheese. So I've put in some of the gorgonzola with the ricotta because the ricotta is pretty mild and the gorgonzola is going to give it's that a lot of flavor. A little more kick. Then, this is actually with four cheeses. So then we want some fontina, and you've got some great looking fontina oh, yes. there. Yes, yeah, I brought a chunk of fontina valdosta. Yes. Valdosta is one of the regions of Italy in the, the northwestern part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the true fontina comes from that area. I mean, there's a lot of copies. The aroma of this fontina is so intense and so yeah. wonderful. Smell it. Yeah, right? it is. It is and, it's very. And uh, you would want to probably. I just dice, dice it, it up. up. Yeah, okay, I just so dice it up. You you, you need maybe pieces. like you know a half a half a cup of that's diced up. And the reason I'm putting this in with these cheeses again, it's going to add flavor, but it's an easy cheese to manipulate in this mixture. Sure. And I think we should tell them too that not to be fooled by just going to the store and saying Fontina because there is also it's Danish Fontina. Well, Danish, that, Swedish, that, American. This right. is the most copied cheese. Second right. to uh, Emmental of Swiss for Swiss cheese mm -hmm. is Fontina. But the authentic Fontina comes from a mountainous area. This is uh, cheese that is made in the mountains from free grazing mountain cows. It's so unique and so wonderful that's going to make a difference in your cheese balls for sure. And uh, one thing to know about uh, Fontina, Throw it, it, right is, in it is raw milk, mm -hmm. but aged for about 120 days yeah. before you get the full yeah. flavor. So now that brings us to the king of cheeses that we all know as Parmigiano Reggiano, coming from Emilia Romagna. We have it here, That's grated, right. but why don't we talk a little bit about that? See, I'm going to put it in while you talk about okay, it. Okay, Parmigiano Reggiano, first of all, easily identified because throughout the entire wheel, these wheels are about 80 pounds, yeah. approximately 80, 85 pounds. It's marked around there, Parmigiano Reggiano, all across the cheese. Mm -hmm. A good piece of Parmigiano Reggiano should be mature enough that you would be able to see a lot of these little white specks. These amino that, acids in that's there. That's right. There's, yep. a, there's actually two white specks. The, mm -hmm. the little tiny ones is the protein, which is developed from the amino acids, mm -hmm. and there's larger circles of white, which is abundance of calcium. Yes. You know, this cheese is, uh, has a better proportion of protein to fat ratio. Mm -hmm. And Parmigiano Reggiano, for me, is one of the best table cheeses you can get. I agree with you. Just break off a piece like and, this, and, just Marian, eat it. And, and and you have it. Yes. You have it and get that crunch, that wonderful crunchy flavor That's in your right. face. It's sweet and yet it leaves such a satisfying And you get those little finish. crystallized pieces in there. And that's, that's, mm. It's one of the reasons why we call this a grana cheese, because of that mm -hmm. uh, grain. You know, it's uh, it's Parmigiano Reggiano, and okay. you mentioned before the king of cheese. The king of cheese. Okay, coming from Emilia Romagna. 
All right, now, we have our mixture, but we can't do anything with this because we have to chill this first, Lou. Okay. So before you came over, I made up a batch of this. So why don't you put this in the refrigerator okay. and get me the cheese mixture that's it's already, already ready okay. to go. Great. This is a great thing to do for an antipasto party. If you want something quick, you don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, I'm constantly telling you, if you have quality ingredients, you've got it made. So, for the cheese balls, we need nuts. So here we have some walnuts. Okay. You could use any kind of nuts, really. Ground almonds, you could use a mixture of nuts if you wanted to, hazelnuts. So, here's how this goes. I stay up at night thinking these things up, how to use these wonderful products. So I take just a bit of that, and you can take some too. Your hands are clean, right? Absolutely. And just roll that into a nice ball. And this is why you need to chill it, because otherwise this would all be just sticking to your hands. So roll it into a nice ball like that, and then just coat it. Just wrap it around into those nuts. You may have to press it a little bit, just like that. And then you just put them on a small dish. And you do as many of these as you want. A batch like this is going to make about 20 cheese balls. And you let this come to room temperature because another thing I think that people forget about, Lou, is that cheeses should be eaten at room temperature. I often mention to all my customers that they should have the cheese. Really, I like it at aging room temperature, mm -hmm. which is around 55 to 60 degrees. Not cold, but not, not, cold. not warm, warm. No. Where you can get the best flavor from the cheese itself. So isn't that simple?